Today I'm going to show you how to create a glass morphic effect. So people use these a lot of times when they have a very busy photo or they just want a cool little effect. So I'm going to do a couple different ways we can do this. So the first one we're going to use is with this photo right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into elements and I am going to try to match this photo as best as possible over top the other one. And then what you want to do now, let's see, oop, oop. now once you got it like that, what you want to do is crop it down into the shape that you want. So if you want a rectangle or whatever and where you want it in, within your photo. So say we want it on this side right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to edit photo. I'm going to take the one we reduced and I am going to add blur. I want it to the whole image. And then you're just going to put the intensity up to how blurry that you would like to have that. And once you're satisfied with that blur, we're going to go back out. So now that gives that blur kind of effect. And the other thing you can do too, if you want your corners rounded, is round your corners as much as you want. That'll give you the glass effect here. The other thing that I like to do to kind of make it look a little bit more is I'm going to take this right here. It's called a circular blur shadow. And let me put it on this page here so we can see. I'm going to turn this to a darker color. Because these, like, the, these beans, buddy. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it to this page real quick so we can see it. So what I want to do with this blur is I'm going to go into edit photo. I'm going to go into Duotone. I'm going to customize it and I'm going to change both of these to white. So I want the shadow to be white. I am going to cut it in half like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back over here into my photo. And then I'm going to size it up. I'm going to hold my control keys because this shadow will go into your Oh, I didn't use a frame. So if you use a frame to do this, it will grab onto your frame. So if you if it does that, just hit a control key. You can also do this in a frame if you want to, like, like one of these. But since we've got curved and everything like that, you can just auto do it with a picture. I think it's very easier than having to use a frame. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to layer one like right at the top, and then I'm going to size it down. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to put, I'm going to spin it around. I'm going to bring it down to the bottom. I'm going to duplicate that again. I am going to spin it sideways. I'm going to bring it over. I am going to make it bigger. And this will just add help you add a little bit of depth to it and you can just put that where you want to center it up and then duplicate and then put another one on the other side spin it around like so and that'll give a little depth to that and now you can go ahead and add some text let's see let's grab this espresso one and put it over here like so and that'll give you that effect so if you're trying to create like a design with like the frosted little pieces on here, what we can do with that is we can go up to elements and I'm going to grab my shape. I'm going to change this to a cute background because you know me, I want it to be cute. Let's grab this color here. And what I'm going to do is turn this shape into what shape I want to make it as. So we'll do a kind of a normal size one right here. You're going to want it white. This one's already white, but you're going to want it a color of white. And then what we're going to do is go in here and we're going into our gradients. And I'm going to add, I'm not going to. So I have it showing it th these two, but I don't want this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my color picker, turn it white. And then I want five of these, three, four, five. Um, it's up to you how many you want to do, but I do five for mine. 
One, two, three, four, five. So the three in the center, you're going to take this slider here, which is your transparency, and turn them all the way down to zero. So that's going to bring that color through that you're using on the back of your page. So that's going to bring that through. And what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to use and go to 50 on my two outer ones. So I'm going to go 50 here and I'm going to take my slider down to 50 on here. Maybe 50, 50, 50, 50. There we go. So that gives me that illusion right there. Now you can also duplicate this turn it this way or you can just make another triangle doesn't matter line it up go down here like so and that'll give you and then you can take your transparency up here and kind of work how you want those to be and that'll give you sort of kind of like a, a beveled type morphic effect morph effect or Another cool way to do this is, well, let's grab another square. What we're going to do, change this into white. We're going to use the same one we did before, but what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use it this. I'm going to duplicate this, lay it on top, grab here, and your third one and your last one have are the corners. So you can do a corner like that. And then you can also, or just take it if you want something like really light. Um, so you can play around with these, the intensity of how you want to do it. And another thing you can do is you can go over here. I'm going to duplicate one of these and bring this over. So you can like go really crazy on how you really want these to look. So I can like tighten this up, bring this in a little bit and kind of start making this thing pop a little more and then I'll duplicate it down here so you can do something really simple if, just by using your gradient tool to kind of create that effect over top I'm not spinning very well y'all and then bring that down like so and that gives you like a little glossy type there or you can let's see let's all right, I haven't tried this, y'all. This is live action looking. So I'm going to take that, let's see, that one be from behind it and delete it and see what that looks like. So that'll give you like a little frosty, little frosty there with the two corners, which is kind of cool. Maybe you want to take one of these. And kind of put that on the edge like so. Bring it down, bring it out a little bit more. Kind of give that edge. Live action experimentation here, y'all. Here we go. Together we learn. Ah, there we go. Kind of put that down on this edge like so. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. I like that one. So that's what the, the corners, the corner and the edging. Maybe I'll lift that up a little bit. Kind of bring that corner out a little bit. Ooh, I like that one. So, and then if you wanted to put text on it or something, you put your text on there. And if you wanted your text to kind of look like it's, I don't know how much it'll look, how much of an effect it'll take, but let's look. I'm going to go and go in a position and position, please, and move my text behind these and see. It kind of gives it a little frosted appearance back there. So it's really cool. It's still, it's a little bump and it gives you some 3D effect. And that's how you can create those. Some easy peasy. It's just using your gradients for these types. And the other one is just really using the blur effect. And even on the other one, if you really wanted to, you could go into your photo here, go into edit photo, and you can also go in and Hit your adjust button if you wanted to darken that photo up or lighten it up to kind of make it look different. You can definitely do that. It's just up to you. 
you play around with it and make it the way you want to. But it's a cool little effect, and especially on a busy picture, it help you. It will help you out a whole lot. Where you, it, especially if you need text, be like, "That's the most awesome picture. I want to use that picture, but I can't put no text on it because you can't see it." And this helps you put text on a picture that is extremely busy. And uh, that's how you do that. If you have any more suggestions, please put them down in the comments of ways to do this. Together we learn, together we grow. I love you guys, and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye, y'all.